me going. It's kind of like, as I said to you in the, before, it's like, you know, when you're running a race or when you're in a marathon, you're not kind of paying attention too much about the journey, but you're thinking about the end result. Do you find the pressures of working in this industry? And, and this, this question really is for young girls who are, want to have, uh, take up dance as a career. Do you feel the pressures of this industry um, sort of significant with re regard to, to feeling the need to have a perfect body? You know, it depends on what industry you're in. You know, if you're in front of the camera, you know, there it depends. You know, with concert dance and with um, musical theater, you have this thing called typecasting, you know. So there's characters, there's character work, just in acting as well, on screen work. But I mean, you have to really find your place and be secure with what you bring to the work. You know, but body is, I mean, body is, it depends on what you're doing, what kind of work you're interested in. But to say that there's not a specific body type and that the media and what the media feeds us to be what perfect is or what perfection is. I mean, you watch magazines, you watch the billboards, you watch, I mean, TV, and it's kind of like thrown at you constantly what perfection is, what the image of beauty is. Um, it really depends on what kind of work you want to do. How, how would you and you find your place you know and and then and, and sometimes you create that space for yourself and i think that's where the power lies is where you create that work for yourself in a beauty exactly how, how and how does that um what does that look like to you in a beauty oh. what does inner beauty look like yeah. wow here here you come <laughs> with the poetic questions huh? <laughs> but you know but, but well, let me let me let no let me let me shift it this way. Um, do you believe in that though? Obviously, yeah. obviously, I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all. I mean, I know it sounds kind of cliche and cheesy, but everyone is beautiful. Everyone has something special and different to bring. You you were the assistant to VMA award winning choreographer Jeffrey Page yes. for Beyonce's video, "Girls Run the World" and. Um, Beyonce's, then the Billboard Award and Beyonce's Oprah Winfrey tribute. Yes. What was that experience like and what did you learn from that experience? It was incredible. You know, I met Beyonce um, when I was off Broadway doing Phila. This was mm. right before Jay Z came on as a producer of the show. And I remember when she was watching the show, everyone, of course, you're like extremely excited. You have a celebrity and then it's Beyonce and oh my goodness, she's watching us and you know, have this expectation of what she would be like when you meet her. And then it was wonderful because when we met them for the first time, um, they were extremely humble and gracious. And then being in a position where I was invited to work as an assistant to the choreographer, it was great to be in a room with someone that to me at a point of my life seemed larger than life. And then working with her very intimately for a week in preparation for the various awards and the various shows. Um, it was incredible because I then realized how human she was and how hard working. I mean, she's by far the most hardest working person I've ever worked with. Um, she is extremely exceptionally hard on herself and she's a perfectionist but what I also learned about her is that she worries just as we do about how wonderful of a performance she wants to have so she's constantly working on herself and and she tends to also be very loyal like I was able to work with her more than once because of our working relationship in the room like once she connects with you on that level where she um, knows that you're about the work and that you get your work done and your energy is good she invites you back into her process so that has been my experience with her and it's extremely humbling because as I said before first this person is larger than life because they're this celebrity but then once you're in a room with them and you're working with them you realize how human and how much more similar you are to them than you're different what is it about you that you believe uh, makes you such a highly sought after performer. Wow. What do you think you bring to the table? I mean, I believe I'm a very sincere individual. Uh -huh. You know, there's no BS about me. I, I tend to be very um, 
truthful. Truthful. Yeah. I like that. And sincere. And I think that directors and choreographers like that. You know, there's something about the entertainment work that becomes so pretentious. And then what happens is that you lose the depth within that, you know. I think when you come to a space sincere and ready to work, that kind of energy actually ignites that spark that is needed for choreographers to feed on to make work that is meaningful. Art saves lives. I want to... Yes. <laughs> Well, a little bit more there before we go on a quick break. You've done all of this. This is going into the third year that yes. you started. How does it feel? I mean, when you're in your quiet moments, knowing what you've accomplished, knowing where you want to go, and you're on the road and you're on route there. How does it feel personally, knowing that you had this idea, you believed in it, you persevered, and you're seeing the fruits of it? Well, I'm proud. Mm. I'm proud of it, you know. Oh, yeah. Very proud. Because, like my career, has been a challenge to prove to anyone how valid my art is or how valid my dream and my desire to be an artist is. The same challenges I had with having to prove to people how valid it was to create an organization like this. And so, to see that the impact that it's having and to see the kind of energy and buzz that it has created in the community, it says something about perseverance more than anything. I, I picked up in you this determination, commitment, drive, perfectionism, as you mentioned. When you think about those qualities, which of your parents would you attribute some of you know the various ones to? Hmm. Both of my parents mm -hmm. serve as great examples to me about perseverance, hardworking, self-made people. Um, both of my parents did not have college education. They were both, um, not. my dad was the eldest of his siblings, and so he had to stop school to help to provide for his others, mm -hmm. to help his parents. My mom had to do the same, but she wasn't the eldest. But they were both people that were self-made and determined and did not have passed a high school education. So, whenever I think on their story, I think way back to my grandmother who has served as an extreme inspiration to me. Um, I think on, you know, I have nothing to complain about because, you know, they've done so much with very little. So, I have no reason to complain or to give up, you know. I'm kind of like walking on the back of some real um, hardworking people, you know. So... Who am I to complain about the tribulations of what I'm going through, you know? I feel like they've, they've done all the work to give me the privilege to have the option and the choices that I have today. Let's take a break. We're back with the lovely Nicole the Weaver. Nicole, where would you say you draw your inspiration? Wow. From my environment, in a sense, you know, like... I just watch how everything move around me and I think for everything to actually move as it is moving and from the colors to the sounds to the people you pass by, it's like I'm just inspired by my direct environment. Do you, do you have a personal philosophy about life? Like hmm. what, what, you, what you use, what, what keeps you grounded? Well, I feel like in terms of uh, my everyday mantra, as I was saying before, it would be, I am, I am here, and I'm worthy. And also that I love to, I love the meaning of namaste, mm -hmm. you know, that you, you, you acknowledge the divine in everyone. So I think I live my life knowing that compassion is important, you know, and um, treating everything with compassion is important. What would you say you've learned about yourself throughout the lifespan, lifespan of your career? What have I learned? About yourself. I learned that I am not good at being still. And that it's important that I understand that it is, in, is important for me to be still at moments. I know you're, you're pretty young. 
poll, but I'm going to ask you this, this question though. When have you been most satisfied in your life? Most satisfied? Hmm. Man, you got some really good ones. <laughs> most satisfied in my life. Wow. I've never thought of that. Never thought it's okay. I'm sure I have moments of that. Um, but, you know, I must say with what I'm doing now, you know, there's a sense of um, satisfaction. Satisfaction. I like yeah. that. Yeah. With, with such a demanding schedule, how do you strike a balance between work and leisure? I'm not good at balancing. Really? Yeah. And that also has to do with the fact of that I said that sad. stillness is something that I have to implement more in my life. I feel like that it would, that it would serves it would not only serve me in my best interest but also serve what I'm doing. When are I you need most to be happy? still. Oh, I'm most happy when I am dancing. When you're dancing. Yeah. When I'm dancing, I'm very happy. But you know, like anything that you love doing, you fall in and love, in and out of love with it. So you have your moments, but I, I must say, I, I, I'm in my true element when I'm moving. What do you really enjoy about dancing? What do I really enjoy? I really enjoy the moment where it's more like when you're in a trance. And I had gotten there with doing filler in certain moments of the show where you're, you're no longer thinking so much about what is your, what you're doing, what your body is doing, but you allow your spirit to take over. And it says, it's a, it's a moment where you can't really place words, mm -hmm. but it's when you're the most vulnerable, but yet the most free. And, and, and um, it's that thin line between not even caring if someone is watching. It's like you're out there and for a second, you're not even concerned about having an audience. It's more about the experience of expressing to your fullest, you know. Freedom. And I and, and that's real freedom. And I and, and there was a moment in the show that's called Yellow Fever. It's a song. It's one of Phila's um songs, song. Yellow Fever. It there's no vocal, it's all instrumental. It's like at a climax of the show mm. where every dancer gets to take a solo. And um there was moments within my choices of movement where it was most like being entranced because it was as if the body and spirit connected on a certain vibration where you forget you're performing and it's just being very sincere and true to the moment, you know? Yeah. What are you most thankful for? Well, I'm most thankful for life and being here because I've lost a lot of impactful and important people and meaningful people in my life, very close people. And um, to be here and also thankful for my family. I am very, my family is very important to me. If you could go back in time, mm -hmm. what would you tell your 14 year old self? Not to be afraid. This question I ask all my guests, nobody expects. I'm, a, I'm very nervous about that question, <laughs> Mr. All right. Collins. What, ma what, <laughs> what makes you laugh out loud? Wow. Man, you got some good ones. <laughs> some stuff I've never thought about. What makes me laugh out loud? I laugh at myself a lot. <laughs> You know, I mean, Yourself. and I think it's also something that I had to learn how to do, laugh at myself, because I'm very critical about myself. Um, what makes me laugh out loud? Mr. Collins, you got me there. <laughs> you make you make people laugh very I know. because you're so funny. But My dad, man, I was telling you about him. He was, we used to call him the George Jefferson of the family. He had, he was so smooth with it too. Like in his worst moments, he would find humor. So my dad, man, what makes me laugh out loud? The memories I have about my father, where he, about my father, where he was like probably on his dying bed, but he found a way to make everybody in the room just burst out laughing. 
because he made the lightest energy out of the darkest moment you know like he was such a spirit like such a, a a funny guy you know so what makes me laugh out loud is like if i reminisce on little moments that i've exchanged with my father and he said something extremely inappropriate but she was was always doing like he'll choose you know being in church and he'll say something inappropriate for all of us to be laughing and giggling at a very inappropriate moment what makes me laugh out loud is those little moments where it's like you know you're testing the boundaries you know of where you are those moments you know i, I reminisce on those moments with my dad where he would just be so inappropriate and it just make me kind of laugh to myself if that answers your question, Mr. Collins, oh, no, 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 <laughs> what no, makes no, me no, laugh out loud? It, it, it makes me want to stretch a little bit. You've traveled all over the place. Yes. If you had the chance to go to your favorite place, mm -hmm. with favorite thing to read, book or whatever it is you like to read, a favorite drink, and a favorite music. Okay. Where will this place be? What will you be reading? What will you be drinking? Okay. And what music will you be listening to? Well, one of my favorite places would be Thailand. Thailand. I love Thailand. Yeah, I spend a lot of time there. And um, my favorite book is The Alchemist. Hmm. Um, it would be either Thailand or Singapore because I spent a lot of time in Asia working. And um, The Alchemist because my dresser, the lady that helped me dress on stage, her name was Suryani. I never forget her, and it's nearly 10 years ago. She gave me the, the book, The Alchemist. And I didn't read it until a couple of years ago. And when I opened that book, I remember feeling like it was the time for me to open it and read it. It felt like it was the right time for me to receive whatever message I was receiving in the book, you know. And so it would be The Alchemist as a book. It would either be Thailand or Singapore. <laughs> Let's say Thailand. And the drink, I don't drink alcohol or anything, but I love virgin pina coladas. Mm -hmm. I'm an island girl. I like tropical drinks. And the music, I'm a big fan of Bob Marley. I love Bob Marley. Ah. From a very young age, I've had all his albums, all his posters, every T-shirt ever made, every book. Really? I mean, I'm a huge Bob Marley fan. He's a naturalistic Exactly. <laughs> and um, actually, his show is being right now... There's a musical being made on his life and his story, and it's in Baltimore right now. They're workshopping it in Baltimore and performing it in Baltimore. I have a couple of friends in it. So anything, anything you would like to say before we close to the young people that you um, mentor and teach in St. Martin? Well, I'll definitely like to say just not only St. Martin, but not only young people, um, I would definitely like to encourage every human being that is listening to this um, interview right now, you know, be, be honest with yourself and, and be truthful with what you want to do in your life. And um, try to live your life not stifling yourself with fear, you know. Um, be conscious about the people around you and how you can shift and move their lives positively. And... Um, to live fully, you have to be honest about what you love to do, you know, and so serve that, honor that, and pursue it, because what is an existence if you feel like you haven't really um, honored that gift, you know, so find what you love and do it. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Uh, thank you so very much. <laughs> thank you. And thanks to the audience for listening in. This is Selwyn Collins saying good night. Fear not what fear whispers to you. Fear your obedience to it.